I'm David Santola, and in my book, uh, How Behavior Spreads, The Science of Complex Contagions, which came out in 2018 with Princeton Press, I talk about really our theory of social networks and our understanding of strong ties and weak ties and how that understanding has prevented us in some ways from seeing how social change spreads. Now, strong ties are our close family ties, our intimate friends, our close acquaintances, our sort of uh, immediate social circle. And the thing about our strong ties is that not only are we intimately close with them, they're the people we would lend a lot of money to or um, we would ask to watch our kids, but those people also tend to know each other. They, they kind of exist in social triangles. Um, whereas the weak ties are like casual acquaintances, people we don't know very well, people you meet at an airport while traveling. And that person's for weak ties contacts that are strong are totally different than our strong ties. And so they exist in sort of different parts of the social space. So a tie, a weak tie across different communities acts as a bridge or a conduit um, across the social space that acts really as, a, as an accelerator for the spread of, of new ideas and information across populations. And so what How Behavior Spreads is about is understanding the network patterns that allow this spreading process to succeed and, and, and what the differences are between our intuitive notions of networks and how networks really operate. So we've all got this really intuitive notion that, you know, uh, if a network can spread out in lots of directions, like a fireworks explosion, that's going to be a really fast, really effective way for spreading something, um, any kind of social contagion, really. Um, but if a network is all kind of clustered together, kind of like a fishing net, that that's going to be kind of slow and lumbering and much less efficient. And I talk about some of the science experiments I've done um, using large populations, you know, thousands of people online embedded in social networks, studying whether the sort of fireworks pattern or the fishing net pattern is more effective for spreading change. And what's so striking is that the fireworks networks are really good for getting information out there to everybody, but it doesn't really trigger adoption. But if we look at the fishing net pattern, information spreads much more slowly because it goes to a lot of the same people. You get a lot of redundancy. But that redundancy is actually really effective for triggering change. The reinforcement provides essentially social confirmation that this idea, this product or technology is a good one. And as people adopt, they further add more social confirmation among their peers and neighbors and spread much more effectively for these fishing net patterns to larger and larger numbers of people. And I discuss the ways in which this really impacts health. And I'm thinking about some of the strategies for changing health behaviors. And I wrote this book several years, obviously, before the COVID-19 pandemic. But it really applies to many of the things we're thinking about today. Like, why didn't face masks spread as effectively as the disease? And why are we having so much trouble um, spreading vaccination in some communities that resist the idea? When all of a sudden, people are faced with this enormous sort of existential threat of a deadly disease, why aren't behaviors taking off as effectively as the disease does? And so what we need to look to is people's social networks and the way in which they control what people believe and the way in which we can use those networks to amplify people's acceptance of new behaviors and health innovations that will ultimately help our population be safer.